Spiritual Sanitation. Uh, again, I'm your host, Seth Williamson. We'll be walking through some of the uh, exploratory exercises surrounding around this particular process uh, for drug product development. Basically, an overview for what we're going to talk about today for extrusion sterilization. We're going to be looking at the pharmaceutical development advantages uh, to extrusion sterilization. We're also going to look at a simple formulation and process flow diagram. Some examples of the process of equipment, some real-time examples, some of the equipment that we actually use in our laboratory. Orally administered drug product examples, uh, some products that we have worked on here within our lab as well. Some packaging presentations, and then we'll wrap up with a conclusion. I understand that some members of our audience may be a, their first experience or a first uh, to investigation, if you will, with this extrusion experimentation, and some actually may have some more advanced level uh, usage or have dealt with this at a higher, uh, at a larger scale. So, without further ado, we'll dive right into some of the pharmaceutical development advantages of extrusion sterilization. Um, with extrusion and sterilization, you basically have the ability to create different release rates with the same drug substance, meaning that you can create multi-particulate dosage forms that allow for immediate release of the, drug, of the drug substance, as well as provide a sustained release of that drug, sub, uh, drug substance over the, uh, the course of the, of the dosing. Also, we have the ability to administer one or more drug substances in a single dosage form meaning that some drug substances that may have some known incompatibilities with each other, proven from a laboratory setting, may be able to dose those in a single product. One of the things that we face mostly in formulation development, product development, is flow properties of materials. Particle size distribution control is one of the advantages here for extrusion sterilization. Most of us have battled flow properties with drug, drug products and drug substances, high drug loads that may not have very good flow, with this particular process, we'll be able to control uh, the particle size distribution, providing less variability, as well as, again, improving flow properties. The extrusion sterilization process is a continuous process, and we, there's capabilities there that we will look into as we get into the presentation. Also, with extrusion sterilization, we have the ability to improve drug substance bioavailability, bio excuse me, with your choice of excipients and through your formulation and development. Particles or spherules or beads, pellets, so we'll be using those terms interchangeably throughout the presentation, are readily distributed in the gastrointestinal tract upon ingestion, meaning you're dealing with a pellet, not necessarily a a uh, solid oral dosage form in, a formula, in the form of a tablet. Um, these particles can be um, evenly distributed as they are ingested, which leads to the next bullet point of dose dumping or modified release products. Um, dose dumping basically is excessive release of the drug substance, um, especially it could be a problem with modified release products once they're ingested, basically letting too much drug into the system uh, at one time or we're looking at for modified release programs as a slow release over time. And finally, flexibility of a final product and packaging presentations. We'll talk about some what we what would we do with some of the spheres that we've created and how we would develop them into a final drug product. So moving into the formulation and excipient selections for extrusion. One of the advantages here for formulation and excipient selections and extrusions is that we can use high drug loads, uh, high drug loads with poorly soluble compounds. Some of the compounds that we deal with here, we actually, uh, BCS class 2, BCS class 4, maybe poorly soluble, maybe have low bioavailability. This particular process will allow us to deal with some higher drug loads and uh, basically build up that drug product. For extrusion spherization and creating spheres, we have similar excipient selections for this as we would for a, let's just say, a direct compression or a modified or sustained release tablet. In the list that we have provided here in the slide, number of categories or functionalities with excipient selection for extrusion, similar to what you would do for many other dosage forms, looking at 
insoluble, insoluble fillers, disintegrants, binders, polymers. Believe it or not, even use an anti-adherence in, in lubricants. So basically, from your drug substance, looking at an excipient compatibility, set up an excipient compatibility program and deem any one of these functional categories usable for drug product development, we can move forward with extrusion sparenization. A simple process flow diagram here basically just outlines what we would do with extrusion sparenization or the result of extrusion sparenization. So starting with simply dispensing drug substance and excipients, we go through a process of wet masking, similar to what we would do as wet granulation, probably a little wetter than some of us are used to using in wet granulation, but we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides. From wet masking, we'll go to extrusion. We'll talk specifically about some of the pieces of equipment, especially some of the equipment that we've used in our lab. How do we actually get to the spheres, drying techniques, and then for any additional coating applications that may be necessary, uh, whether it be a cosmetic coating or a functional coating applied to the actual spheres themselves. And then sort of final drug product 